My name is Asana Azenyo Onat, and I come from uh, a small town in the northwest region of Cameroon called Kwen. And I'm um, a student in the University of Edith Science. And I'm um, Yawande, actually, I work with Cyber Cafe. And I am the author of a book called General, which I have in hand here. Actually, I'm um, the senior historian, in other words, called the writer of the story, mm -hmm. which we have in this book. Okay. And I um, was motivated by a rule called power and praise. So in the book, I'm trying to describe how power and praise are linked in destruction and in the progress of a country. Okay. See, we are in a country where power has been dominated for so long by a single person. I'm not a politician actually, but I just want to point out the aspect of how power can affect a country's progress and how power influences people's way of reasoning mm. and what praise has got to do with the way the world is right now. You know, many people always want to feel different when in society they try to get praise and it's what is causing most of the problem today, especially in Africa. I'm called Asan Bazi Aze. I come from a small town in Cameroon called Queens and I'm a student. I am a student in computer graphic designs and also I do a lot of extra designs like design house plans and design environmental beauty. And the author and the designer of the book, Zenara, that you find here. I think it's a great opportunity for me to express my feelings through my art and I think that expressing my feelings through my art in a fantasy format is a great opportunity for me to also bring to life what I feel and show to the world that you can actually entertain people using fantasy. Yeah, we actually want to know what motivates us to create a, a comic book like this. When I was young, I used to love watching comics and stuff like Superman, Batman and the rest. Well, when I used to watch this movie, these cartoons, I discovered that there's a lot of controversies in the storylines. And the story will usually be favored towards the antagonist, and there will be a lot of not logical events going on. And when I thought of it, I was actually quite attracted to the cartoon world, and I loved the way it environment used to be something abstract, fictions, mm -hmm. but quite entertaining. So I got captivated by that atmosphere and I decided that mm -hmm. maybe I should create something that can express my own feelings in that way. And it's a bit very easy for people to get attracted to comics because it doesn't involve a lot of writing. People love pictures mm -hmm. and action. So I thought it as a better way to express what I know or what I feel concerning what I just said before, praise and power. What actually motivated us to come about a band Disney, as we call it in French, is actually since we were very, since we were young, we actually loved designing and coming up with stories. We had written so many other stories before this one. We have also been trying to produce them in comic format. We also actually wanted to answer some questions about the world, some troubles of the world, and also to see how we can pose possible solutions to those particular problems using our art. And we thought that the easiest way to attract someone using art is to actually produce the images because it will not be cumbersome and tiring since the people will be seeing the images and through the images I'll be able to get the story that we're trying to put through and definitely mm -hmm. in the story there'll be a lot of questions that we'll answer so I, I thought that that would be a better way for us to express and answer certain problems in the world using a comic book mm -hmm. Yeah, main for our part is you know, about um, all the power we are talking and what, how is it concerned to society Zenora is a book that involves a lot of beans, somewhat like a 
high a complete fantasy but you can relate to society in reality. Cinema takes place in a medieval period. That would mean that it involves beings like gods, demigods, people of the underworld with special abilities. And he's talking about a young world which is in peril from a great dishonor that the gods did on humans who had advanced spirits. So these humans, from the dishonor they received from the gods whom they were saving with no regret, they decided to create a particular force, binding their spirit and will to that force in preparation for a compatible weather in the future. So generations have gone by now and the force has matured. But there's one unfortunate thing about this force is that whoever isn't destined to use the force, if he touches the force, it will consume him into an evil being. No matter how good you are, you cannot use the force for a good purpose unless you are the compatible weather of the force. And the force can turn the weakest person in the world to the mightiest. Mm. Because it has been a force that has bind people's will, spirit and energy for generations, centuries. So now, beings, gods, humans and demons, or what we call unknown in the story, because there are people who resurrected from the dead on their own account, are searching for this power to utilize and dominate the world. This power was created by those who we call Publots. Publots are were humans that had advanced spiritual development and they were serving on the gods. They were being dishonored by the god because the gods needed their spirit to fortify their own powers. So that's why it's, then Zenera's role in this story is to bring the power down to the good side for mm -hmm. it to be destroyed. But actually we don't know whether this power can really be destroyed entirely because it's a great force that no one can even get close to it. Mm -hmm. So the story takes us from praise, power, and destruction. It's quite true that if you look at the designs in the book, you want to ask why are the characters having these particular costumes, <coughs> or why do they have these particular looks? Maybe the hairstyle, maybe the, the physical designs, the anatomy. You might want to ask questions like that. But if you look at the storyline, you're going to realize that taking place in the material period in which there are gods involved and in which there are also heroes and warriors mm -hmm. this kind of outfit is actually going to match the story and also you realize that we are trying to introduce a lot of things into the story a lot of new ways, a lot of new beings for example if you are reading the story you will come across beings like prunes, unknowns, pure bloods, guardians all of those kind of beings that we're trying to introduce, we are also trying to bring out their images actually using the, the various costumes because the costume also depicts the powers that they carry. And in the long run in the story, when you go ahead in the story, you are going to actually understand most of the reason why they dress the way they dress because the costumes also carry a special part to their powers and their design too. We have been hearing about, we have been having a lot of questions about why are we blacks and are colored as they all resemble black people but they look more like white people and resemble Japanese style of manga. Well, uh, a few points here I would like us to understand. In the first place, the first human, according to modern day science and archaeology, came from Africa. So if we want to trace back everybody, that has been evolved to other regions and have different shapes of nose and eye and ears and all chins and the like, we will, we will see that everybody in the first place was black. So the idea about why are we black drawing white people will be maybe out of place. Secondly, I would like to say creativity has no body and what we merely do is express our imagination. A mind that dwells on creativity, develops an aspect in life and fair advances the world. Unlike a mind that reiterates and stores on what is known as your immediate environment or surrounding or tradition. 
it's those last step of life and people are in the same point over and over. So if you're creative and you imagine, just express what you imagine, irrespective of what it comes out to be. And people should learn to appreciate your imagination, not who you are from your imagination, but appreciate what you do with your imagination. Do not look at somebody and judge what he's doing without looking at what he has actually done. So it is not, it's a bit misplaced for people to be actually getting interested in our book or not interested because we are drawing something else that doesn't resemble us. Yeah. <clears throat> Just to add something to that, when they ask us that you are black and your drawings does not represent your being black, I would like to ask back the question that what is black? Is black a color or is black a personality? Because if they say you are black and you draw a white cartoon, they put it more in a color format. I don't think humanity should still be basing the approach of looking at somebody still at the color. I think humanity has really gone past that stage. If you look at the color of our blood, it's all red. The kind of air that we breathe, we all need that air to stay alive. We all need energy to keep moving. Creativity should not also be limited. You should not say that this creativity is for this kind of person, this creativity is for this particular group of people. Because if you are saying that, then I'm also going to say that this kind of air is for this kind of people, and this kind of air is for this particular group of persons. But that's not how the world still works. We are all supposed to come together to share our ideas, to bring together what we can do. And if everybody should put aside the biased mind of looking at color, I think people are really going to appreciate a lot of good stuff that come from those in Africa in general. And that is what we're trying to present here. We're not trying to limit our creativity to drawing the caricatures that people think that is the only thing that can come from Africans. We also want the world to know that Africans have the ability to put something that the whole world can look at and appreciate, both in movie and in music and the cartoon which we have chosen to show. And also, I also like to pose a point. Americans, they do film about um, uh, planets like Mars and Jupiter. They don't stay on Jupiter, they don't live in Mars. So, why don't we say, why don't you only do movies about planet Earth and leave Mars for those who live in Mars? So, let's not limit our creativity to who we are. Imagination is very vast, and if you use your imagination, you can do wonderful things.